You're listening to Coog Radio. Listen live online at coogradio.org. Here we go. Welcome to Real... Wow, I don't even know the name of my show. Welcome to Real Original with Eric Rogers. I'm your host, Eric Rogers. This is episode one, the pilot. Um, I got to turn on my computer here. Fun fact I just learned um, yesterday, actually, was that pilot is a term because it's the first time we're on air. I didn't know that. I saw a TikTok video. It's hilarious. Uh, Okay, yeah, here we are. This is a show not unlike anything you've ever heard before, probably. That's why it's called Real Original. Uh, Most of the stuff I'm going to say is stuff you've probably heard before. Um, This is a sports podcast. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. Completely winging it. It's a good thing I got some uh, great producers around me to supervise this question mark of a show. Uh, We are live from the Coog Radio Room here on the beautiful campus of Washington State University, Vancouver. Uh, We're going to work on getting some intro music here in the future, hopefully. Uh, I don't know the logistics on that or what's legal or what we're allowed to... uh, legally do um i'm sure there's like a time frame or something um but i'm not getting paid for this so i don't i mean i think i could pretty much do whatever i want (laughs) uh we're not working with an unlimited budget though so we gotta make sure we keep it within the boundaries of um a law copyright and infringement laws i guess uh so, who am I? What am I doing here? What is this podcast about? Why do I think I get to have my own podcast? Uh, do I have anything worthwhile to talk about? I don't know. Those questions are yet to be answered. The school said they needed a podcaster. Uh, I volunteered. I've been wanting a platform to talk on, uh, talk about sports, talk about what everybody talks about in the world of sports. Talk about topics that are sports adjacent, like, uh, you know, just other pop culture type uh, news. So uh, it's great. I'm stoked. I'm excited to do this. I can't wait. Uh, It's officially spring now. So excited about that. Um, My birthday is coming up tomorrow. So that's. but I don't usually talk about my birthday, but seeing as this is the podcast, I feel like, why not? You guys are trying to get to know me a little bit. So, uh, yeah, my real name is not actually Eric Rogers, too. That's just a pseudonym. I won't tell you my real name. You probably wouldn't even uh, know how to pronounce it if I did say it. Most people don't get it the first 15, 20 times they try to say it, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, what a time to be alive. It's almost like life is living again, you know, after you go through, uh, fall and winter, uh, it's like the days start lasting longer and, uh, the sunshine is out, especially right now this week, we've had great weather. Can't believe that I should be out on the golf course right now. Uh, but I'm not. That's okay. I'd rather be doing this anyways. This is a lot of fun for me. Um, so, uh, let's see. It's Aries season. If you're into horoscopes, I won't read you any, but I'm an Aries. I know a lot of other Aries. And uh, we, are, we are an interesting group of people. Um, great time of year for sports. Obviously, you got the... March Madness NCAA tournament going on right now. How do your brackets look? For some reason, I don't even know how it works out, but I'm in the 
upper 99 percentile of my ESPN tournament bracket. Um, or maybe that's lower 99 percentile. I don't even know, actually. I think, uh, but I think I'm, I think it means upper 99 percentile, which is pretty good, even though two of my uh, final four teams are not in it anymore with Duke getting eliminated, which wasn't really an upset. They lost to a higher seed, but I still thought that just the Duke brand i guess is what jaded me um i thought that uh they were a little bit better than the tennessee volunteers but tennessee's good this year the whole sec is actually good this year we had a huge upset the other day when arkansas knocked off kansas ruined my bracket uh the the Arkansas head coach, after they won the game, took his shirt off and was like helicoptering his shirt uh, in front of the Arkansas faithful, which I thought was pretty exciting. Uh, what else is going on? We got baseball's coming up right around the corner. Excited to get back into that. Uh, I don't know actually uh, who is favored this year to even be good at baseball. So I got some research I got to do. I know that obviously the Houston Astros are probably um, one of the betters favorites to win the World Series. I think the the New York Mets are up there. Um, uh, Seattle. We are here in the Pacific Northwest. I think I mentioned that. But uh, so Seattle is our closest team, the Mariners. And I think that they actually might be okay this year. They broke a 21 year old streak last year of not making the playoffs. So that's exciting. Um, Julio Rodriguez should be maybe an MVP candidate this year. I know that I'm pretty sure he won rookie of the year last year, but uh can't really remember. We'll we'll do some more research on that. By the way, uh a little bit more about myself. I'm not a journalist. This is an opinion based show. So I'm more like a columnist, I guess, if this was a newspaper. Uh I I dropped out of journalism school a long time ago, and so uh, I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. This is an opinion-based show. So if I say something that is incorrect, well, I I don't care. Uh, you can correct me, and uh, I will work on fixing my mistakes. By the way, I will uh, also work on getting a. Uh, uh, a Twitter account set up for this podcast, maybe an email so you can uh, email me any of your questions. Um, but yeah, we got we got a lot to talk about. What else? Uh, we got uh, NFL free agency, which is a big deal right now. Uh, where is Aaron Rodgers going? Where is Lamar Jackson going? Uh, Speaking of Aaron Rodgers, you guys don't know this about me, but I'm a long distant, uh, non-biological uh, sibling to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I guess actually just a doppelganger, a much better looking doppelganger though, I would say. Uh, maybe not as athletic, although, you know, I mean, you know, put my arm side by side with his arm, and I'd like to see how that little competition goes. But um, no, I, I am no athlete. Although I do uh, need to get back into the gym. Uh, I'm about 20 pounds over my standard operating weight right now. Another great thing about spring is uh, spring training. It's time for me to get back into the gym and. Uh, but what I'm really looking for is like some 
pick up basketball games. I don't know if there is like a um, 24 hour fitness or LA fitness or some sort of uh, basketball gym that has regular pickup games. Um, I haven't played a pickup basketball game since before COVID, probably, which is terrible uh, for me. I'm so out of shape right now. It's it's sad. So we need to get back into the gym. Um, I have ADHD, by the way. So if, if I'm going from topic to topic, you guys are just going to have to keep up with me here because, uh, yeah, that's just how my mind works. It's all over the place. Um, but yeah. So this is it. This is the show, you guys. Once again, I'm Eric Rogers, and uh, we got a lot of great, we got a lot of great stuff to talk about. So let's get back to, let's get back to March Madness and the basketball tournament, NCAA tournament. Uh, since we're here on the Washington State campus, I, I should probably mention that the women's basketball team made the NCAA tournament this year, which was very exciting. Uh, however, they lost in the first round. Um, upset, unfortunately. I want to say Washington State women's basketball team was a five seed, which means they lost to a 12 seed, which in the tournament is not necessarily, uh, that's not groundbreaking. Usually, at least on the men's side, uh, I'll have to do a little bit of more research with the ladies, but um, usually on the men's side, there's at least one or two 12 seeds that beat a one, or sorry, a five seed. Um, so it's not unusual. Unfortunately, our ladies lost this year, so they are out. Um, better luck to them next year, I guess. But uh, Yeah, congrats to them on making the tournament in the first place. That's a that's a huge accomplishment. Only sixty four teams make it. There's like a hundred and twenty teams, I wanna say, that that are in division one college basketball. So um so that's great. The Pac twelve uh Pac twelve's had a tough year this year. So uh hopefully Hopefully they can do a little bit better next year. Um, I'm kind of running out of breath here, you guys. I'm not going to lie. This is my first podcast. I'm sweating a little bit. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing here. But uh, yeah, let's get back to the t NCAA tournament. We'll focus on the men's side right now because uh, that's just what I know a little bit more than uh the lady side unfortunately but what a tournament we've had so far another only for the second time in history has a 16 seed beaten a one seed and uh and that's fairly dickinson from new jersey of all states i don't want to well Sorry, New Jersey. I should be a little bit nicer, I guess. Uh, but I've heard some things, I'll just say. Um, but hey, you got some got some good basketball going on there right now. Fairleigh Dickinson beats Purdue uh, in the round of 64. It's only happened twice in history. The first time a couple of years ago um, with Virginia, I think, losing. Virginia gets upset every year. I picked uh I picked that upset this year, by the way, where Furman beat Virginia in the round of sixty-four. That was a four seed versus a thirteen seed. And uh so that that was an, although I feel like Virginia um jokes pretty often. Um it's not the first time they've lost to a thirteen seed as a four seed. 
They uh, they just don't have offense. They play defense. They play defense really well. They don't have offense. And when you're in a one and done tournament where you win or go home, a lack of offense is not your friend. I mean, you know, these teams here are hungry. The, the especially the lower seeds, these teams, I mean, that this is like their one and only chance. You know, a lot of these teams don't make the tournament every year. Uh, Virginia makes a tournament just about every year. Purdue makes the tournament just about every year. But when you take that for granted and you got a hungry, smaller school that doesn't get to make the tournament on a regular basis. And, you know, I want to say Furman University hadn't won a tournament game in 40 years, which, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's a lower C, that's a smaller school, just more hungry uh, and not wanting to go home yet. And in basketball, I mean, anything, anything can happen. You can get cold, you can get hot. Uh, and even though, you know, defense travels, you still got to be able to score points. So if, um, if you can't score points, you're, you know, you're going to lose. And so that's what's happened. Uh, what else? Uh, Princeton. Princeton, an Ivy League school, a non, you're, I mean, you want to talk about Princeton sports, you're probably talking about something like rowing or, you know, like archery or something, you know, like you don't typically look at uh, Ivy League schools as being powerhouses in the football or basketball world. Yet here we are, Princeton upsetting Another traditional powerhouse, Arizona, which, I mean, Arizona, man, come on. The Pac-12 is, is suffering as it is already. Not the, not the greatest conference. Uh, we're actually, you know, losing schools now. And as much as, you know, we want, well, for me, I'm a... I would consider myself a Pac-12 fan. I like a lot of the Pac-12 schools. Uh, so it's like, you know, we got to rep, we got to represent here. And Arizona, a traditional powerhouse, loses to an Ivy League school, Princeton. I mean, I don't even. There's no words to explain how uh, unacceptable that is. And I get it. Like I just said. Anything can happen, but you know the Pac-12 is suffering right now, and uh, in order to you know get some notoriety in the world of college basketball or college sports, you got to maintain your dominance. So um, Arizona did us dirty there. And they're out. Princeton knocks them out. That was a 15 seed beating a two seed, which uh, is also very impressive. Has only happened a few times in the history of the tournament. And so, um, you know, here we are. And since we're completely past the first weekend of the tournament, Completed the round of 64, completed the round of 32. Princeton also knocked off Missouri, which was a two, sorry, a 15 seed beating a seven seed. Which, if you watch that basketball game, Missouri looked like they were never in it. I mean, from the very get go, Princeton was in control and they do these rotations and these ball screens and these off ball screens. And Missouri was going from, you know, different zone coverages, uh, to man coverages to other different zone coverages and could just never compete. It almost looked like, uh, well, 
I don't, it's not a David versus Goliath story, but when you look on the court, the Missouri players are so much bigger than the Princeton players, yet Princeton was just running all over them. I mean, it was it was embarrassing to watch if you're if you're a Missouri uh, if you're a Missouri fan. So um, that was you know good for Princeton and in the sweet 16 now which starts tomorrow i want to say i think the round of 16 starts thursday um yeah in this sweet sweet try to say sweet 16 (laughs) three times fast yeah uh in this sweet 16 for the first time in like 50 or 60 years or something uh like i said i'm not a journalist so uh my facts my facts may not be your facts but that's okay we're this is this is just a podcast we're not taking it too seriously um so let's keep let's keep going so now uh who are our favorite well my favorite in the tournament is alabama which sounds um, funny, I guess, because Alabama is a football school, and um, the fact that they are now well, the, the number one overall seed in the tournament, uh, it's just it doesn't seem fair, you know. But they got a great basketball team right now. It looks like uh, they're in a great conference, so the competition is high they're the best team in that conference and so the 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 number one overall seed and they look really good and they are my pick to win the whole thing um which like i said yeah that's it just doesn't seem fair considering all the football accolades that they've collected over the last few years but um so they play uh they have a tough matchup. Um let's see here. They play San Diego State, who uh I love San Diego State. They are a uh they're not in your power five conference, you know. Um, but yet over the last thirteen or fourteen years, they've had probably uh the one of the five best winning records in all of college basketball which you know for a smaller uh conference school that's that's pretty impressive so we're we'll see how that game goes i got alabama i actually didn't have san diego state even as much love as i just gave them i didn't even have them uh winning in the round of 64 i thought they were going to get upset that was one of those 5 12 matchups i picked the 12 in that one and uh i didn't get it right unfortunately so um anyways so i got alabama taking the whole thing we still got some lower seeds in the tournament florida atlantic um is a 9 seed they let's see are they the are they the lowest seed left, actually? Is that... Oh, no. I just said Princeton. Princeton is the lowest at 15. Uh, but then... So you had Florida Atlantic, I think, beat like Memphis or something. Um, and then they had... Not an easy matchup, but they had that uh, game against the 16 seed, Fairleigh Dickinson, which, you know, FDU was just a little bit overmatched this time the excitement from winning in that first round probably uh took a lot out of them i would imagine and so that's how you get a florida atlantic into the round of 16 which you know uh who even knew florida atlantic was a school i mean not my not me i mean i did i did know that uh they they're okay and college football as well another small conference school but um 
yeah, they got an interesting they got an interesting matchup against Tennessee, who I mentioned earlier had beaten uh Duke, who was in one of my picks to go to the final four. So we got another fun weekend coming up for sure. Uh the Arkansas Razorbacks face Yukon, which Yukon was number one in the country for a while there. I think they went hit a tough patch and towards the end of the season and it kind of dropped some spots. And I think they're a four seed in this tournament. I think they're actually a little bit better than that. Um so Arkansas got a tough match. A lot of SEC teams in the round of 16 here. Yeah, Tennessee, Arkansas, um, Alabama. Yeah, three, three out of 16. That's kind of a lot. Um, the matchup of the weekend for me, I think, is going to be this uh, UCLA-Gonzaga matchup couple traditional powers in college basketball. Uh, I don't even know who to root for in this one. On the one hand, I live here in the Pacific Northwest now, so uh, Gonzaga, I might, I, might, I might have to root for them, but the Pac-12 only has one team left, and that's UCLA, and as much as I'm not really a UCLA fan for multiple reasons, not just the fact that they're leaving the conference, um, but uh, I don't, yeah, I got to root for a Pac 12 team, I feel like, you know, uh, Washington State's here in the Pac 12, so I feel like I have to root for the Pac 12 to show out. Um, they got a veteran. UCLA, I'm talking about, has a pretty veteran roster. So does Gonzaga. So uh, that's that's my matchup of the weekend for sure. Uh, look forward to watching that one. That's uh, 6.45 here on Pacific Coast time on Thursday evening. It'll be a fun one. Uh, I think that's my personal favorite matchup. I think the matchup of the weekend, though, will probably be this Michigan State Kansas State matchup. You got Tom Izzo in his like 106th season coaching basketball. Not fa not a fact. Um I just know that he's been around since I feel like before I was even born. Um getting his team he's a, he's the most winningest coach in active coach most winningest active coach in college basketball right now, getting his team to the Sweet 16 again um, for like the 17th time. I don't know. That's, all, that's, not, that's not accurate either, but he's been there a lot, if you know what I mean. Um, and Kansas State, it's like, where are these football schools coming from that all of a sudden they're, they're basketball schools? Kansas State, I don't even know how to basketball team. I think we're picked last, picked to finish last at least in their in their conference. And here they are, a three seed. Michigan State is a seven seed, which if anything, you would have thought those would have been flip flop. But uh, no, it looks like uh, Kansas. Well, it's funny though. Because Michigan State, if you're if you're a betting person, Michigan State is favored by a point and a half in this game, which uh, I would probably take. Actually, I would probably take Michigan State to win by more than a point and a half. I mean, but that's but that's my that's me and my uh, recency bias i guess uh not knowing anything about kansas state uh they look kansas state has looked pretty good in the tournament but i just think like oh kansas state michigan state basketball game you're gonna you're gonna choose michigan state every time right 
I am. I don't know. Um, let's see what else, what else do we got here? Um, Princeton taking on Creighton. Should be an interesting matchup. I have, I personally have Creighton going to, I think it was the elite eight and then losing to, uh, Alabama after that. But looking at this Princeton's team, Princeton, I mumble a lot. So you guys are going to have to deal with that. And then I'm also going to have to try to work on my voice. Anyway, like I said, ADHD. Um, Princeton looks really, really good, man. Like, they could make. They could make a run here, and it would be one of those runs that rivals, you know, like George Mason of 2006 or seven, whenever that was, or Loyola Chicago a couple years ago. Princeton can make that type of run, and I feel like, you know, once they beat Arizona, I'm not saying they have an easy road. They're, by any stretch of the imagination. But uh yeah, I think I think Princeton could beat this Creighton team, which uh would put them in the Elite Eight and they haven't been in the Elite Eight in forever. So, so that's a fun one. That's a fun one to watch. We got that one Friday, Friday evening at six o'clock. Um so, NCAA tournament, we got a big weekend ahead for the NCAA tournament. We're going to figure out who's going to the Final Four. Like I said, two of my Final Four teams are already gone. Um, I still got Alabama in there. So, you know, I don't think I'll be winning any money in any of uh, my bracket pools. But, uh, I don't know. 99 percentile on my espn bracket i feel like that's pretty good so uh anyway stay tuned stay tuned for college basketball this weekend what else we got um uh, i don't know if you saw this last night i know spring is um here so that means baseball is right around the corner and I'm sure a lot of people have been going to Arizona to watch some spring training. Uh, and I guess not seeing some of the major baseball stars because they've been playing the, the major baseball stars like Mike Trout, like Shohei Otani, have been playing in the World Baseball Classic, which... I know of the World Baseball Classic. I don't know, I didn't know it was happening this year. Usually you don't get like your major baseball stars in the World Baseball Classic and they did that this year for some reason and it has been very exciting. I haven't watched <laughs> I haven't watched. Uh although I did watch a little bit last night you had the championship game of the world baseball classic and it's like uh, for those of you who don't know what the world baseball classic is it's like the um it's like the uh world cup it's it's like the countries take each other on you know like last night you had japan taking on the united states in the championship game and it was a very dramatic finish. Trey Turner hit a home run to start the scoring for the United States. Japan put some runs on the board. Uh, Kyle Schwarber hit a home run to make it a little bit closer. And then you had. Shohei Otani in the bottom of the ninth going up against 
his major league baseball teammate, Mike Trout. You're talking about two of the best players in baseball, if not the two best players in baseball. Some of you might think that Mike Trout is kind of lost a step. He's had some injuries in the past couple of years. But regardless, uh, two teammates going against each other, Shohei Otani pitching, Mike Trout up at the plate. I wish I had the audio for you guys. Maybe we can edit that in later in, in post. But uh, Shohei Otani strikes out. Mike Trout goes down swinging on a 3-2 count and wins the World Baseball Classic Championship for Team Japan in dramatic fashion. And it was it was it was quite a scene. I mean, honestly, I had never seen a exhibition game so Hotly contested, so uh, ener- so full of energy. I mean, the player you should have seen these players in the dugout, uh, on the field, just cheering for an exhibition game, which uh, I guess meant a lot to these guys. Like I said, you don't you don't see stars in the world baseball classic so that was um that was fun that was fun to see good for good for team japan happy for them wish team usa would have won obviously but uh i think we've had ours i think i think usa has won its fair share of world baseball classics or maybe they haven't i don't know Another thing that I haven't really uh, researched enough because, I mean, who researched World Baseball Classic? Uh, Anyways, but yeah, so MLB season's right around the corner. I think uh, we're only like a week away from the season starting, which is exciting. I can't wait to make my way up to Safeco field for a Mariners game um great great stadium great place to watch a ball game so excited for that uh I think Seattle has a good chance to make the playoffs again what kind of run they can make I don't know uh I think that um the Houston Astros like I said are probably better New York Yankees, probably better. Um, but 162 game season, haven't even started yet. Got a long way to go. I'll talk more baseball probably uh, later in the year. Not too much to discuss right now on that, so we're going to move on. But uh, happy to know that. You know, if you don't have anything to, that's the great thing about baseball and like summertime is that if you got nothing to do, it's almost like it happens almost every day of the week. You know, I mean, granted for us, we have to travel kind of a long way to get to Seattle three hours, which watch out for Portland getting their own baseball team in It probably won't happen for, you know, 10 more years, but it'd be, I think we're on the short list. Like if baseball were to expand, I think we're on the short list of places to get a baseball team, but still, uh, you know, summer is great for baseball. If you got nothing to do, you know? So anyways, moving on. Got some NFL news to talk about, even though it's the off season. I feel like the NFL does a great job of keeping their 
or relevant even during the off season. So much drama. Oh, where's where's Aaron Rodgers going? Where's Lamar Jackson going? We care we care about this stuff so much. We gotta talk about it even though the season's over, even though the season doesn't start until early September. The NFL does a really good job of off season promoting. Uh everybody wants to blame Aaron Rodgers for you know not making a decision. I don't think it's him not making a decision. We know now, actually, it's the Green Bay Packers that are holding up a deal of getting rid of him, whether it's to the New York Jets or some other team. Hopefully, hopefully not the New York Jets. I just can see it. Honestly, is that isn't it too Brett Favre like for Aaron to go to the New York Jets. I mean, do you really want to follow in those footsteps? I mean, you know, I'm not saying that Favre wasn't a great quarterback. He's a great quarterback, Hall of Famer for sure. But, you know, legacy a little tarnished probably by some of his off the field antics. whether it was sending, well, I don't know. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't think I can. I I I probably can, but I'm not good. I'm not going to speak too much about Brett Favre's past. We'll just leave that. We'll leave that alone. I know some people are getting in trouble right now for for talking about that. So, but what I'm talking about is just like the. Uh, the following in the footsteps of your predecessor, right? So Brett Favre, Peters on retiring, not retiring, retires, comes back, goes to another team, the Jets, you know, retires again, comes back, goes to another team. And so it's like Aaron always talking about retirement, it seems like, over the last, three or so years, even though, I mean, you look at the guy, it's like, dude, you still got it, clearly. Four-time MVP, you had a down year last year, okay, not that big of a deal, but please just don't go to the Jets, man. Brett Favre went to the Jets, you took Brett Favre's place, why why are you going to go to the Jets? I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. New York or New Jersey, wherever that stadium is located, I think it's still in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But uh either way, I you know, you got a terribly uh taxed income tax sort of state. They're going to take a lot of the money that you're making. When you could go to, I don't know, a non-income tax state like, uh, say, uh, Florida, you can go to the Miami Dolphins. I know that Miami has uh, given their word to Tua that he's their guy, but I mean... If you're the Miami Dolphins, I don't understand why you would let somebody like Aaron Rodgers in your division and not be on your team. It was bad enough that you had Tom Brady in the division for 20 years, uh, owning it, owning the division for 20 years. Miami hasn't had a good good, decent a decent quarter we haven't had look i like Tua. i think Tua's a great kid um but in the nfl you gotta be big you gotta be strong you can't be getting injured you gotta be available you know and 
when you get three concussions in one year, I I feel like I feel like it's time to go. Like do do the team a solid and just say, hey, look, I gotta retire. I know he's only in his fourth year, third or fourth year. He's a young guy. He's good. He's a good quarterback. He's accurate. Um, but he's not sturdy. He's not sturdy enough. And I feel like in this league, it's all about availability. And so I don't know why the Miami Dolphins don't go after a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who has been fairly healthy most of his career. I can't think of any major injuries that he's ever had. I know he's had some knee issues, and uh, I think he, you know, I think he might have hurt his thumb one time. <laughs> but uh, no, he's been, he's still, he's still got a great arm. You got weapons down there in Miami that needs, somebody who can push the ball down the field you're working on your defense you just signed Jalen Ramsey you got Xavier Howard you just signed a bunch of linebackers I feel like Miami needs to take a shot here and get Aaron Rodgers don't let don't let Aaron Rodgers and if you do let Aaron Rodgers go to the Jets well, then what are you going to do? All of a sudden, you're going to be the third best team in your division again, fourth best team in your division again. So then, okay, well, then what's the other option? Uh, Lamar Jackson. Where is Lamar Jackson? Who, by the way, is from Miami. I'm sure. Would love to play in Miami with Tyree Kill, with Jalen Waddell. I mean, how explosive would that offense be? You know? Dual threat can throw, which, despite popular belief, Lamar Jackson actually does throw a good football and obviously can run. So I think that I think that Miami's got to take a swing here. You got to get one of those two guys. You can't let one or both. What if what if Lamar Jackson goes to New England? You know? Then and then what? So anyways, uh Sorry to go on my little Miami Dolphins kick here, but uh, somehow I became a Miami Dolphins fan a long time ago, and uh, that was the last time they had a good quarterback, actually, was when I became a fan uh, in Dan Marino in the 80s. So I hate to age myself here, but yes, I was born in the 80s. So I guess I wasn't really a Dan Marino fan, Miami Dolphins fan, uh maybe until about 4, 1990. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's not talk about my age. Although like I said, my birthday is tomorrow. So um I will not tell you how old I'm turning, although you could probably figure it out from the information that I just gave you. Um but yeah, uh, what other, uh, some other NFL news? Um, I'm curious to see where Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott, try to say that name three times fast. Um, I'm curious to see where he's going to go. He was let go by the Dallas Cowboys a couple days ago. I think the overall, um, opinion is that 
he probably doesn't have it anymore. So I'd like to see if he goes to a good team and proves his worth, proves that he still does have it. Um, curious to see, curious to see what happens with a few of the running backs. I feel like are on the market. Uh, Derrick Henry, I guess, is available. Dalvin Cook is available. So, free. That's the thing about the NFL. Uh, you always get these. Big name free agents keeps it interesting, keeps it relevant all year long, even though we probably should be talking about other things like uh like the n b a although a smooth transition we'll we'll trans transition to the n b a here uh in the last we only got a couple minutes left but uh i don't want to talk about the nba because i don't want to talk about the portland trailblazers who are seemingly out of it not gonna not gonna make the playoffs not gonna make the play in not you're gonna tell me and i don't know it's because you know there's they're so inconsistent. They've been so inconsistent for the last two or three years. Ever since they made that run to the Western Conference Final, what was that four years ago? I mean, there's no consistency. There's no defense. It seemed like, you know, two weeks into the season that Portland was going to make a little run here, maybe be one of the top four or five seeds. And that didn't happen. And so it seems like they're actually uh, going to tank the rest of the way. I don't, I know that Damian Lillard, I know that his heart is in it. He would never do such a thing as tank. Uh, but the team might, the team might shut him down. Uh, and so they're out, not going to make the, not even going to make the 10 seed to get into the playoffs to the play in. So, uh, that's sad because they, I feel like they have the roster to do it and, um, Sure, a lot, of, a lot of other people thought that they had the roster to do it. But now, let's see, because I think that puts them in the lottery. Uh, and hopefully, may, I don't know, maybe they make a trade during the offseason to try to get a number one pick. But there's that uh, Webinyama fellow who is going to be drafted number one overall and by all accounts should be this transformational type of player. And uh, I think, I mean, I, anybody would think it would be a good addi addition to the team. Um, and uh, I know Damian would love to have him, so... Um, Hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll do something about that. Your team, your team's got to be willing to make moves. And I know that uh, in the eyes of a lot of people, not myself, Portland is not that desirable of a place to live. Like I said, not my opinion. I love it here. Um, but I guess if you're a, you know, a star in the making, if you're making a lot of money, you know, maybe you'd rather be in a place like LA or Miami or New York or whatever. But 
you know, Damien has made this his home. Damien wants to win a championship here in Portland. Damien does not want to be part of a super team that is bought. He wants to build it organically. And so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Portland does something drastic, makes a splash, moves up in the draft to get that number one overall pick. We'll see. But, um, yeah, well, man, an hour goes by a lot faster than uh, you think, especially when you're talking about something that you like to talk about. And I know, so we got our next co next show coming up uh, on Friday, 9 to 10, Real Original with Eric Rogers. I think, uh, we might be a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say more prepared, but we might have a little bit more to offer next time. You know, we, like I said, we might, we might try to fit a little music in there. Not like, you know, like 10 seconds worth of like intro music or something. I might try to provide a couple of little sounds. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm capable of yet. I don't know what the show is capable of. I know that, uh, we're here for a good time, probably not a long time. <laughs> uh, and I'm, ex I'm excited. I can't wait for the next, um, you know, seven weeks or so of this school semester that I have uh, available to do this. And maybe we can, maybe we continue it even next semester. I don't know. Uh, but this has been great. And I appreciate everyone here that's helped me do this, my producers. Um, thank you. Uh, you can contact the real original show. Go ahead and I'll set, I'll set this up. Uh, it'll be um, Eric Rogers, real original at gmail.com and that's that's eric with two a's <laughs> uh, i love it uh yeah eric rogers original at gmail.com and i'll set up the eric rogers real original or real original with eric rogers twitter account i'll get that going and um we will take we will address your questions and comments i wonder if i can get anybody to like call in and like uh like do a on-air calls we're gonna work on that too uh i'm gonna work on getting us some actual interviews uh i know i know a couple people in the sports media industry that uh would probably come on here and and help me talk so that you guys don't have to listen to just me for an hour uh but i can do it i'll talk i will i will talk forever so you know just know that i can do that but i would rather i'd rather talk to somebody else if i'm just being honest so anyways thank you guys i appreciate you uh this has been fun the pilot real original with eric rogers We'll see you guys on Friday. Take care.